huge fan. You guys know him, Kids in the Hall. He's now doing his Broadway show, off Broadway show, uh, Alive on 42nd Street. You guys can go tonight through Saturday. It's one week, so you got to get it while it's there. Telecharge.com is where you guys can get tickets. Kevin McDonald, what's up, buddy? Uh, 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 nothing. Everything. I, uh, what, how do you answer that? I forget. Everything's good. What's up? I, what, you it seems like I have to give a long answer for that. No, yeah. you don't. You just do You just do the Facebook or Instagram thing and be like, everything's great. Uh, everything's great. Thank you very much. But congratulations on this. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I guess you can congratulate. Can you congratulate something I've only done two shows of and no one's uh, hurt me yet? Yeah, I accept your I congratulations. Mean, it still takes balls because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I have a weird fear of standing in front of an audience. Like, I can do camera, but for some reason, the audience, a live audience freaks me out. I don't mind if I'm like with a posse, like you had kids right. in the hall, you had this group. Yeah. But solo, yeah. did you ever have that fear? Without the posse, uh, it's so lonely. I feel lonely. I, even though uh, my producer over here, he's nice. And the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the guy that plays guitar with me, John, he's nice. But it's still without the kids in the hall, it feels very lonely. Like, because I mean, we share our own pain together, our own nervousness. But with, uh, without that, I, I, it's lonely. I'll stop saying the word lonely. It's okay because I you're saying you have no one to lean on, or if you're hungover or in a bad mood, or <laughs> uh, yeah, or, or just the, the it's lonely anyway. Even even being on stage with the four of them, it's lonely because being on stage is a lonely feeling. Um, there's people there you think they're judging you, they're not, but you th- maybe they are. Uh, but you, that's what you fear. So, um, uh, but you take away those four best friends, then it's like lonely times lonely. It's it's a lonely squared. A hundred percent, and and maybe I have post traumatic stress from going to all girl Catholic school. So when I stood up in front of the class, I felt everyone judging. You know, yeah. like, look at her shoes, look at her hair. Blah, 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 blah. So it freaked me out. But did I also you went ever to Catholic school. Growing- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thing is, I'm also shy. Um, I'm shy. I'm a shy egomaniac because like I'll write something, <laughs> and uh, even though I'm shy, I'll write something and I'll say, Oh my God, what I just wrote, people have to hear this. People have to hear this. This is crazy. I I'd be cruel to the world. I'd be selfish if I just kept this in my office. I gotta let people know. So I'm a shy egomaniac. How do you test it out? How do you like go like okay? I gotta. Who do you trust to say I'm gonna stand here and perform this and you tell me the truth? Yeah, no one. Um, uh, <laughs> no, because the kids in the hall would just give me too many notes. <laughs> so I I just do it. I do it, you know what it is? It's myself. I, um, I do it in, um, uh, like in my lonely office in my house, uh, and I just do it over and over. And then after a while, I'll get an opinion. Oh, I don't need that part. That, that part's good. Uh, if they don't laugh, it's their fault. It's their problem. That, that part's... <laughs> <laughs> I like blaming the audience. Yes, it's always blame problem. the audience. Yes, always. And what, what can people expect? What will they hear in this one, off-Broadway off one-man show? Alive. Well, uh, is that what it's called? Alive. Yes. Um, uh, well, there's going to be um, stories and songs, which makes it sound boring. Um, uh, a lot of the stories are Kits in the Hall stories. A lot of those stories are Scott Thompson stories because he's um, uh, crazy in a good way. So a lot of craziness has happened uh, with me and Scott Thompson. So um, there's, some, there's some crazy Scott Thompson stories. Uh, can you, cra- can cr- you give me an example without giving the show away of like a Kids in the Hall Ki- juicy yeah. story? Well, I can do a title of one. I'm asking for advice. I'll be back in three seconds. <laughs> yes. I'll fill it okay, <laughs> there's one Scott Thompson story. I'll just give you the title. It's just two words, but it gives you the, the feeling. Well, I was um, uh, the show, uh, the Scott part anyway, because um, I was his roommate once, and uh, something happened to make me write this story. It's a true story, and it's called Masturbation Fire. <laughs> Okay, that alone could be the whole show. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to make it into a musical. <laughs> Masturbation, fire, get the water, get the water. Masturbation, fire. Get the- I just had this conversation about to, to somebody about, because everyone's going to college right now, and then we all started telling, the older folks started telling stories about, oh, God, their roommate, and the boys would always talk about how the guys would just masturbate, and we're like, dude, I'm right next to you. Yeah. Like, do it in the shower like everybody else. Yeah, I was like that with Scott uh, when, we, <laughs> when we were roommates. Yeah, I was like that with Scott. So this is only a week long. Are you going to g- expand it? Well, if people, uh, if there's a demand, we'll expand. I'm rhyming. If there's a demand, we'll expand. If people like it, uh, I, w- I would love to expand it. Yes. I don't know. There's no expansion plans yet, but who knows? 
fingers crossed. I have yes. a feeling it will, especially with masturbation fire. Yes. Um, <laughs> what were you like a class clown at all, or were you still shy in school? I was a shy class clown when when I was a. Um, it's a bad joke, but when I was twelve, I just remember this a few months ago, and I've been telling people this is the first joke I ever made. I, everyone just thought I was shy. Um, and then in science class, people don't remember these things, but there's this scientific thing called pith balls, P-I-T-H, pith balls. They're, they're white things, and they float with the right kind of flame underneath them. And uh, we were supposed to read about it, but I didn't. That night, I, I saw a Marx Brothers movie on TV instead. And, um, and then I was in science class, and Mrs. McKenzie, I remember her name, Mrs. McKenzie, uh, she said, um, all right. And she pointed at me. She said, Kevin, where do pith balls come from? And I said, uh, I don't know, Pittsburgh. <laughs> I, I was, and then she said, "Get out." <laughs> I love that joke. So that was that was the first time you could remember, though. The everyone yeah. probably laughing. Everyone really laughing. Yes, uh, it's, I, I don't know Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're like, okay, this is good. I like this feeling. and it's I, I do. Like, I was out in the hallway excited. Well, first of all, the my personality, Catholic uh, personality, I would have been terrified and embarrassed and humiliated that I was outside. But I wasn't. I was excited because I could still hear them laughing and I could hear Mrs. McKenzie say, stop it. Stop it. Do you want to join him? And, and, and that sort of excited me. So you literally were sent outside the classroom. Yes. Uh, like uh, People always think we're called the kids in the hall because we were sent out. That wasn't where we got the idea, but we were kids that were sent out. Oh, that's so awesome. I mean, was that the worst thing that happened to you in Catholic school? Uh, <laughs> uh, once my... T oh, then I was funny. Um, actually, I was funny the year before, 11, in Catholic school. Mr. Goldman put me in the closet. Uh, for being funny. I forget what it was. I, it, yeah, yeah, I made, a, oh yeah, I made a joke about the, the priest. <laughs> it just was a, I totally forget the joke, but it was a joke about a priest and he put me in the closet for like two hours, which is probably why I'm claustrophobic. And, and, and uh, so that wasn't so much fun. Isn't it weird that back in the day when, I mean, I hear my mom saying, you're lucky the nuns used to hit us with rulers. And yeah. How the priest used to beat the shit out of the kids. Yeah, yeah. The, my dad said the same thing, and uh, and he had to learn Latin. My dad was so old. He like he was in the last <laughs> group of people that uh, had to learn Latin, and then they would hit him. Latin and being hit doesn't sound like a very fun school. In Canada, I thought I'm surprised it wasn't like French or something. Uh, it was French. My dad was French. Oh, but oh, I it? see. But you still be, uh, like because he was a kid in the um, in the forties, and that was the last decade where that you had to uh, take an hour of uh, Latin class. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, he must have been. Uh, I was. I said he became he a drunk. Really old. <laughs> <laughs> He um, what Catholic dad didn't, my friend? Yeah, good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. So, well, growing up in Canada, what did you think of America? What was your views of it growing up? Well, I was um, I was a back Canadian. I loved America better. I always wanted to be, and now I'm a dual citizen. I always wanted to move to Los Angeles to Hollywood. When I was six, I organized my friends. We started building a giant box, and we were going to get a big balloon, and we were going to fly to Hollywood. I remember that. That was oh, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a right to uh, like an autograph to try to get uh, like a fan? Yes, or... uh, Lassie. I... Come on. <laughs> I wrote to get an autograph for Lassie. Uh, <laughs> true story. Did you ever get it? I never got anything back. No, Lassie. Do you remember what you wrote? Uh, Dear Lassie, you are my favorite TV star. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please sign this? I was an idiot child. No, um, it's cute. I, I always was Wonder Woman. I always loved this. Yeah, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I, I. My favorite shows were uh, Lassie, uh, Batman, and the Monkeys. Oh my God, that's so sweet. Yeah, and and the kids in the whole. The, where did you guys? I know that you didn't you uh, meet. Um, Dave at a sketch comedy troupe or something like that. We uh, we met at Second City Workshops. Um, I I was there. I was still a teenager. I was nineteen. He was seventeen, and and I was there a whole year before him. And eighteen after I got kicked out of college for acting, I went to Second City Workshops. And there were only two teenagers in the, the class my first year. It was me and a guy named Mike Myers. And, um, and Mike and I, uh, we tried to form a troupe, but Mike was Mike was as good as he ever was back then, and so he intimidated me, and then he got hired by Second City, and then I was sad. I was being in my second year of workshops without my friend Mike, um, and everybody else was over 35, and I was 19, and then a 17-year-old walks in, and it's Dave Foley, and uh, right away, uh, I'll tell the story quickly. Um, uh, the the you have teacher, all the time in the world. Thank Go you ahead. very much. Thank you. Um, the teacher um, pair, put everyone in the group in pairs, just by coincidence. The two teenagers, Dave and I, were together. We didn't know each other, and then um, 
Uh, we did the mirror exercise where you uh, actors <laughs> yes. mirror each other's movements. But every other actor was doing it seriously. And we started doing funny things and we started making faces. And then we slowly yeah. went to the floor and then we went into the fetal position and then we crawled out of the room out of the, the hallway and down outside of the Second City <laughs> Theater in the sidewalk. And we started like rolling no. down the sidewalk. And no. we, true story. And then um, through the window, we saw the teacher going, get the fuck in here. <laughs> so right away, we were funny and breaking rules, I guess. And then at the end of the class, he had been funny all class and I was funny all class. Uh, I didn't know his name. And I went to him and I said, um, do you want to join my comedy troupe? I didn't have a comedy troupe. And, <laughs> and he said yes. And that's how we met. And have you guys stayed friends? Are you still connected with the guys? Yes. Oh, yes. We're still together. Like, we might do another TV show. We'll always do another tour. Once we fail at getting another TV show, we'll just uh, go back to Plan B again, the tour. Uh, yeah, we're together. Um, Dave did the. Uh, Dave does the uh, pre-show announcement. Um, uh, he recorded that for the show. Um, oh, that's awesome. I just did his podcast, The Cunt One. Yes. He told me you did it. Yes. <laughs> I only said it about a hundred times. Um, you guys toured four years ago with Kids in the Hall. Yes, uh, 2015. Yes, four years ago. Yes. How fun was that? Well, it's always fun to be together. Um, uh, as we get older, I wonder how fun it'll be. <laughs> Old men in a tour bus, uh, but but, you, but it was fun. But you know, because I, you know, I'm with my husband who is in a boy band group, and you know, there's still egos to be had, and you're close quarters, and you're traveling, yes. which isn't the you know the funnest thing ever. I mean, I'm always amazed when groups are able to stay together or friends. Yeah. Um, I look at the Rolling Stones. I'm like, how the fuck are they still together? I know. I know. You know, you see Pink Floyd, which I'm so sad about, but shit like that. But do you guys, have you ever had moments where you're like, God damn it, he's pissing me off? Or is there... Oh, yeah. So, but when we were younger, um, uh, th here's the thing. And, and I think uh, your husband's boy band is a little younger than we are. So maybe the, they still have conflict, which is healthy sometimes. Um, yeah. But when we were 20s, we were the assholes in the hall. We were really mean to each other. And then as we got into our 40s, well, I read, uh, do you remember the band Camper Van Beethoven? Uh, yes, of course. Well, uh, they got back together in their 40s, and they were known for being assholes uh, to each other when they were in their 20s. And I read a Rolling Stone interview where they said, um, are you guys still mean to each other? He said, well, when you're in your 20s, it's your job to be an asshole to each other, because that's how the, the work gets better. But then in your 40s, the work becomes... Not less important, but uh, getting along <laughs> becomes just as important. And so <laughs> we, we work harder in getting along. Sure, Scott Thompson will still have a fit every now and then about something. <laughs> looking um, at your like IMDb, I was looking at mine the other day, and I wanted to erase 99% yes. of it. Yes, Is there, there anything on your there where you'd be like, God, I just want that to go away? Yeah, there's a few things. <laughs> I, I, could, I shouldn't be mean and mention them. I'll just say there was one thing. That I shot that was pretty bad. A few of my comedy idols were in it, like like when I was a kid. So that was good. Um, and I'll, here's a sad story that'll ruin the morning for everybody. Uh, I did the movie because I just moved to Hollywood, and they offered me. I thought it was a good good money, and then <laughs> um, and so I delayed my uh, going back to Toronto to visit my mother, and then she had an aneurysm in the last day of shooting and died. So that's my comedy story for the day. Oh my God, that's terrible. So I did a bad movie. And then I vowed, never do a movie just for money. But I've, I've changed that back because, <laughs> because I've been married since and have two ex-wives. and uh, totally get it. So my vow is, do the right thing. If you don't need to take the money, don't take the money. Yeah, if you need to take the money. Do you got to take the money sometimes. That's my vow, do the right thing. I'm so excited for you to do this. I wish I was in New York because I would be there watching you. You're so you funny much. and talented. Thank I you give much. you all the credit in the world. Kevin McDonald, alive on Thank 42nd you. Street. Yes. It is tonight through Saturday. You guys can get tickets at telecharge.com. Please come back and promote anything you want. I think you're okay. fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'll buy If I buy an album I like, I will, uh, I'll promote it. <laughs> Thank you. You're funny, Kevin. This is still live, so I'm going to slip under the table. You do it. You can't. I'm going to go to commercial break. You're all good. We'll be right back, you guys. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!